Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting the warriors of Craftworld Ulthway for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. And to do so we're going to be using one of the new Guardian miniatures, but it's worth noting that all the methods and techniques we're going to show you in this video can be applied to all sorts of different units in the army. Everything from Warlocks to Wind Riders to Wraith Guard and more. We hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. To paint the Guardians of Craftworld Ulthway, the first thing that you need to do once you've built your miniatures is to undercoat them. And for this one, I've gone for Mechanica Standard Grey Spray from Citadel, which forms a fantastic starting point for all the colours we're going to be using in this video. Now, any sort of neutral mid-tone like this will do just fine. So for example, you could also use Xandri Dust if you prefer. The choice really is yours, but the steps are going to be the same throughout. Now, before we do start painting, there's a thing that people often like to do with Eldari miniatures, which is to keep the heads separate and paint them separately because they're often a completely different colour to the rest of the suit of the miniature. This is a personal matter of taste. I personally prefer to keep them all as one main assembly because when building the miniatures, I like to put the head on there to pose the model. The choice really is yours though. If you do want to keep them separate, then just paint them separately all the way along this video and then glue them in with some super glue at the end. Whatever you choose though, what we need to do first of all is paint the main colour of the miniature, which is going to be the black for that undersuit and the colour I'm going to use here is Corvus Black, which is a slight off black because what we're going to do is apply this and later put a black wash on it, which is going to really deepen the recesses and give us some nice shading. Now because we're applying quite a lot of this, I've gone for quite a large brush to paint it on. So this is a monster brush from the Army Painter, good brush for base coating details like this, and what we need to do is just make sure the paint's thinned down as ever on the palette to ensure it doesn't clog up any detail by being too thick. So what we need to do is just gradually add a little bit more water to it, just thinning it down, bring it around to this sort of point here where it's flowing smoothly from the brush and it's nice and smooth on the palette. So that looks pretty good. With that prepared, all we've got to do is start painting it all over the suit of the Guardian. Now at this stage it doesn't matter if you happen to catch details that are going to be colours other than black because we will neaten those up as we add further base coats onto the miniature. Instead for the time being just work on getting this into all the little nooks and crannies of the suit and also the faceplate on the helmet which is going to be around about here. Now for an even smooth finish I do recommend applying two thin coats here just to be sure that the first coat is completely dry before you move on to the second. Once you have an even black on that suit, the next thing we're going to do is pick out actually one of the spot colours for Ulthway, which is a deep red. And here I'm going to use some corn red. The details to do here are really anything that's kind of decorative and fabric-like. So we're looking at things like sashes, ribbons, anything like that. But also in the case of Storm Guardians, like we've got here, also the plumes are a great thing, and grips of swords, anything like that. Now for this, I'm using a medium layer brush from Citadel, which is a nice size for the kind of thing that we're doing here. And as ever, we need to get that paint thinned down. But now, unlike the previous paint colour we used, we just need much more control over it. So part of the thinning down process is to get that control. So you can see I'm just gradually adding a bit more water to the paint then bringing in more pigment if it goes too far, just going back and forth between them until I get to around about this kind of consistency where I can very easily get it to flow smoothly onto the palette just there. So I'm happy with that. So that prepared and then ready for the base coating. So as I mentioned, we're looking for anything decorative. And in the case of this guy here, what we've got is a little ribbon on his forearm just here. So I'm going to be picking that out really carefully. And if you do make any mistakes here, don't worry about it. Just jump back to Corvus Black to neaten that back up again. But you can see it kind of goes around here. But also I'm going to be painting the plume up the top of his helmet. So we're looking at this sort of area all the way down here. And also the grip of his sword as well. Once you're happy with that red, we can then move on to the next base coat colour, which is going to be the last before we apply a wash over all of these at the same time. And this is going to be some silver for the melee weapon. So if you're going for a Guardian Defender, you won't need to do this step. But in this case, what we need is a dark silver. So here I'm going to use some Iron Warriors. And to apply it, I've got that medium layer brush once again, because here we're just looking to base coat the whole of the blade. Now, if you've got a warrior that's holding a chain sword, you're looking at doing the teeth at this stage. But in the case of ours here, it's the entire sword. So we need a fair amount here ready on the palette. See a nice dark silver colour. And with this, all we've got to do is apply a smooth base coat across the entire blade. And with this kind of thing, because we want it to be as smooth as possible, I recommend applying the base coats in smooth sweeping motions like this all the way across to get that smooth finish on the flat of the blade.
Once you have that smooth and even finish to that silver, we can then apply the first wash over the miniature. And this is going to be a black wash, which is actually why we base coated with Corvus Black on that black armor, because this black wash now is going to deepen down the recesses and give some definition and also leave some subtle highlights in the raised areas too. And the color I'm going to use for this is Norn Oil. And because we're going to be applying a lot of it, I've gone for quite a large brush. I'm back to that monster brush from earlier on, because this can also be used to shade the silver and the red that we've applied so far. Now this kind of washing, I like to use a palette to build up the paint because this allows you to control how much you're applying at once because whilst we want to put on a fair bit here we don't want to overdo it so it starts pooling too much so having the palette helps control that application but to begin with just load up a good amount on your brush and then all you've got to do is start painting it across your miniature and what we're looking to do is to let it settle mostly in the recessed detail but you can see it stains the whole area and darkens it down and just brings it closer towards a pitch black now, as you're applying quite a lot of this, it will tend to move around the miniature and it can pool in some areas. So you do need to keep an eye on it as you apply it and as it starts to dry as well. In particular, keep an eye out for parts that are sort of sticking out of the miniature, sort of areas where you might get quite a lot collecting. So for example, the little ribbon just there, that's a little point that I'd be wary of because if you apply quite a lot into this sort of area, you can see it really starts to gum up that position just there. And that can be quite unpleasant if it dries like that. So if you spot that happening, just redistribute the paint elsewhere around the miniature before it dries. Now, when you are applying this kind of quantity of the paint onto a miniature like this, it will take quite a bit of time to dry. So I recommend leaving it for about 45 minutes before you move on to the next step. Once that wash is completely dry, we can then move on to a few more base coats before we apply some more wash onto the miniature. And the first of these is going to be for that second major colour of Ulthway, which is going to be the bone colour. Now, as an alternative, you can do yellow here if you prefer. The choice really is yours, but I like the bone style on this one. So for this, I'm going to use some more gas bone. And to apply it, I've got the medium layer brush from Citadel once again. And for this first step, all we've got to do is block these areas in. And it can really be whichever parts you want. And some patterns can get quite elaborate on the armour, including shoulder plates, things like that. In this case, what I'm going for is just the helmet and also his pistol. So once that paint's thinned and ready as ever, it's just a matter of looking for those features. And as I mentioned, we've got the helmet, being careful of the faceplate, and it's just a matter of blocking this all in with two thin coats to ensure that smooth, even finish before moving on to the next stage. And you can see here, I'm using the raised up texture of the helmet going around the faceplate to allow me to get that area nice and quickly and neatly by just very carefully grazing it with the side of the brush, just to help pick that area out. Now, in addition, there is his pistol to do at this stage too. So I'm gonna be painting all of this at this point, including this little clip. And speaking of that, if your miniature does have any spare clips on the waist, such as this one does around here, be sure to get the main part of those as well. Once that's all blocked in, we're then ready for another metallic color because now we need to set up the more sort of bronze metallic kind of parts. And for this, what I'm gonna use is some Bathsar gold. And to apply it again, I'm gonna go for that medium layer brush, but feel free to go for a small one should you want to because some of these details can be quite small and intricate. So it really depends on what you're comfortable with. As ever though, you just gotta make sure that paint is thinned down. And once you've done so, we're looking for all these kind of decorative metal parts. So for example, if we take a look at the sword, you can see we've got the cross guard and pommel. All these metal parts around here, we want to pick out with this color. So it's just a matter of very carefully going around these sort of areas and just blocking them in. Now, in addition on his chest, there is a gem and you can always spot out of all the nodes and things, which ones are actually gems because they have a little kind of setting surrounding them. So we're looking at this large one just here. We want to get that little setting that's around it. So just need to very carefully block in that area Area around that gem just there. In addition, there's a little bit of this color on the pistol and that is the very base of the magazine clip just down here. So we want to get that little part around there. But also there's this kind of bar across the top of the gun, this bit just here that we want to get as well. I've finished applying that Balthazar gold now, and I just wanna quickly point out also, I painted those grenades at his waist as well. And with that done, we're now ready to apply a wash over these two new colors that we've added. For this, we're gonna start out with some Seraphim Sepia, and then for a little bit more controlled definition in certain areas, I'm gonna add some Agrax shade as well. But first of all, we need Seraphim Sepia, and for this one, I'm going for the medium layer brush to apply it, because this time we only want to apply this wash onto these new colors. So we're just looking at the bronze and also the bone colored details. So we need the right size brush to control how much is going on there at once. And use the palette as well to make sure your brush isn't overloaded with too much so it doesn't run out of control. But once you've got a good amount on there, we're just looking for these new areas. So for example, on the helmet, I'm just gonna do a wash all over, just paint it thinly across like this. So it mostly settles in the deeper recesses, but also just stains it a little bit more towards yellow. So just there like that. In addition, we're looking for any bronze details as well. So just bring the wash up and over those parts too. 
The Seraphim Sepia is now completely dry and you can see whilst it's given some nice shading, it isn't that dark colour so the deeper recesses aren't very dark at this stage. So what we're going to do now is just introduce some Agrax Earth Shade applied to the small airbrush now into these deeper areas just to give them a little bit more separation and depth. So for example in this little vent just here and on the deeper recesses around the pistol as well. Once that second wash is completely dry too, we're then ready to move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is going to be to do a bit of layering to neaten things up. And for the first colour here, we're going to go back to Corvus Black to layer onto the flat armour panels, which isn't going to jump out a lot, but it is going to neaten things up because at the moment some of that wash will catch the light in some strange ways, and so you might get a little bit of glimmer on some of the flat panels. So to fix that, all we need to do is to go to Corvus Black, and this time applying it using a medium layer brush. We're looking to paint this colour now onto the raised up flatter areas and avoid the deeper recesses where more of the black wash settled in. So this way we retain that depth but also clean up those flat areas. So get that paint thinned down for the purpose and under control on your brush making sure there's not loads and loads on there. And then what we're looking for if we take a look at the chest is to apply the colour onto these flat panels that you can see running down the front here. So for example this pectoral plate just here, it's going to apply it flatly over that area like that, just not going it around the edge, just bringing it up to the edge and then skipping past the recess as it goes to that chest piece beneath it and just picking out the flat part beyond it. So you see I'm just avoiding the darkest area in the little recess just there. Same on the abdominals just here, we've got these panels sticking out so we just want to apply it over these, so we're looking at those areas just there and on this side too, all the while looking for the darker areas and just skipping past them. Once you've finished doing that on the black, we're then ready to move on to doing the same thing on the bone details by returning to more gas bone and again layering it onto those parts to clean things up. And with this, again, I'm going to use the medium layer brush. And remember, this colour is quite thin, so we're going to take advantage of that here to build up some volume on this area of colour. So by doing more coats, the colour will get stronger, so we can use this to control how strong that colour is going to be. So on the palette, just make sure it is thinned down and it's got a translucency about it. So kind of bringing it down to about this sort of point here. And when applying it, then what we're looking to do is the same sort of thing as what we did on the black and that we're looking for the recesses and we want to avoid them. So for example, on the helmet, you can see we've got this little kind of node just here, then we've got this vent at the side. And then we've got this kind of part going around towards the front here. And you can see I'm not going quite into the deeper recesses to retain that kind of sepia color shading that we've got. Same around here too. Now when we get to the forehead, what we can do is build up a nice smooth highlight on here by doing that first coat thinly across the entire area. And you can see that seraphim wash is showing through because we have that translucency about it. But if we bring that all the way around and you can see because of how thinly I'm applying it, it's drying pretty quickly, which means once that first coat is dry, we can then move in for a second one around this area on the dome of the helmet. And this way we get a very smooth highlight starting to appear on that part there, just helping it come forward a little bit more, but it's going a little bit darker as we go around towards the back. And there we are with that layering done. You can see we now got a nice finish on that bone detail there. And also we've got a subtle highlight starting to build up on the helmet. And so with that done, we can now move on to layering with two more colors. First of all, we're gonna to return to corn red for those red details, but then we're gonna add in some iron hand steel. This is going to be for the sword blade. But first of all, we need corn red and to apply it, I'm sticking to my medium layer brush, but again, feel free to go for a smaller one should you want to. With this, what we're looking to do is the same sort of technique, but on those red details. So things like the ribbon, for example. So we don't need loads of this, but you do need that control over it to be able to access these parts. So for example, that little ribbon that we've got, we're just looking to paint it onto the flatter areas and avoid those recesses once again. So we're looking at along here, for example, then just a little bit on that part of the ribbon that's just beneath that one, and then just a small amount as it goes around his arm. Now, when it comes to the plume of the helmet, just make sure you don't have much paint on your brush. And here, just turn the model so you're approaching it using the side of the bristles and just skim along the length of them like this, because this way the, br the brush can only catch those raised areas and it layers them whilst retaining that definition in the shadows. Once you've finished that on the red, we're then ready to move on to Iron Hand Steel, and this is just for the actual cutting edge of the sword. So just make sure you angle your brush about this sort of direction here, and just gently skim along so the bristles only catch the actual sharp part of the blade. So we're looking at this sort of area along here, but not the back of it. And with that layer now applied to the sword, you can see the cutting edge is starting to look sharp. And we'll come back to highlight that later on, but before we do so, we're going to highlight some of the details. And when it does come to highlighting, this is entirely optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, and you could just skip ahead towards the end of this video now where we paint things like the eye lenses and details like that. But if you do want to do it, what it will do is help your miniatures pop out on the tabletop, which is quite important when it comes to a black colour scheme on the miniature. So we're going to be starting out with that. And for this, what we need to do is apply some edge highlighting. Now, when it comes to Eldari miniatures, they really benefit from a clean 
and shine a light on them because it really does work into their aesthetic. So this is the phase where really you do need to take your time. Out of all the phases of painting the miniature, this one is going to be the longest. And what we need now is a dark gray. So here I'm gonna be using some Mechanica standard gray. But for this, don't worry about taking your time because the neater you are here, the better the miniature is going to look in the end. So it's just one to just really work your way through really. Now doing this is all about getting the paint prepared correctly on the palette by thinning it down to the right amount because what we're looking for is for the paint to flow easily from the brush and for it to retain a sharp point, but not so easily that it runs out of control. So there's a bit of a balancing act to do here. You can see what I've got is the lump of paint in my palette and I'm introducing water into it and just pulling in a bit more paint as I need to, to thicken it up. And all, what I'm looking for is a slightly inky paint, not really, really runny, but kind of what I'm getting here, you see, it's a little bit translucent, it's quite shiny, it's flowing nicely from the brush and you can test it now by just loading up with a little bit I was having a go at painting some lines in the palette and you'll see if it flows well from the brush, which it is doing, it can really just keep on going in fact, because it's thinned so nicely there. And that's ideal for what we want because now it will flow smoothly from the brush onto the miniature without any trouble. So with that prepared then, we just need to load up correctly. So you can see I'm just using some tissue to remove excess paint and drawing up fresh because this way I know I'm getting to the right, uh, the correct amount of what I want on there. It's not gonna be too much. And then what we're looking for is any sharper edges on the armor. Now, some of them you'll be able to approach with the side of your brush. So for example, that little vent that we've got on his shoulder just there, we can approach that corner using the side of the brush and just skim along it. And this way we get that gray line on that edge, giving it a nice highlight. And we can just turn the model and follow that all the way around. So for example, along here as well, just skimming along all the way around. And this is the easiest way to do the edge highlighting. And will usually allow us to get to the most important details that are standing out the most, such as that shoulder just there, for example. But because of the smooth nature of these plates, often you won't quite be able to do that, in which case you will need to use the tip of your brush. And when doing this, it's all about making sure you brace as steady as possible. So really brace your hands together like that so you're leaning against yourself so that you're not gonna be shaking. And then carefully move in, and we're looking for kind of a downward motion towards yourself. So on this part of the armor here, for example, just down there like that, and as we get to the abs, I'm gonna do the same thing, that little downward motion, just following that edge all the way down there like that, and the same on the other side too. So we're looking at going across there. Now, rather than going sideways, it's much easier to do that downward motion towards yourself. So then just turn the model, look for the next edge and just start working your way down those. And sometimes it means turning the model quite a lot, such as this case here to get this part of the armor. But you can see it just makes it much easier to follow that edge all the way down and just turn to make sure you're comfortable once again and just carry on all the way around. And there we are, that highlight's been applied and you can see it's helping the edges of that black armor stand out nicely. And if you want to take it a little bit further, you certainly can do by applying a second edge highlight to it, which is something you might just want to keep for your characters or squad leaders. But if you want to do this, what you need is a lighter gray. So here I'm going to use some administratum gray and I'm still sticking to that small airbrush to apply it. And whilst the general technique of applying this color is going to be the same as what we did in the previous step, we're just going to be more selective about it because we don't have to highlight everything now. Instead, we're just looking to exaggerate the more prominent parts that are standing out in the armor. So we're looking for things such as shoulder plates, for example. And so you won't need very much of this, but all you gotta do is identify those kind of areas. So for example, that shoulder plate again, and all you're looking for is the parts that really poke out. So it's gonna be areas such as this extreme corner just here. All you do is just very lightly graze the brush across that corner just to get a little bit of this color on that area like that to help it pop a bit more. Now there's another point at the bottom just there. So I'm also gonna do that fine highlight in that part too. So just very carefully there and same on this side. And you can see it just helps that part stand out just that little bit more. So any very small amounts that you need and it's quite selective too, but just take your time looking around for the miniature for anything that just pops out to you. Just apply a little bit of this color to those areas. And with that, the black armor is now highlighted. And so we can move on to the next major color of Orthway, which is going to be that bone color. And for this, we're gonna go for two highlights again. The first normal edge highlight and the second one being that optional fine edge highlight if you wanna take it a little bit further. So here, what we're going to use first is some shouty bone and then a very small amount of pallid witch flesh. We're gonna be starting out with a shouty bone and to apply it again, I'm going for that small layer brush. And for the most part here, it's going to be edge highlighting once again. Though of course, now there's far less to do because we painted the, well, the majority of the miniature being that black bodysuit. So really, we're for the helmet and also the shuriken pistol. Now, as before, it's a matter of just making sure the paint's thinned down to the correct point and just adding a bit more water as you need to until you get it so it's nice and smooth and it flows well from the brush. So just play around with it on the palette as you need to until you get to that point and then we're ready to start applying that edge highlight. So remember, wherever possible, approach using the side of the brush, which on the pistol is generally quite easy to do, and just skim along just to get that highlight along those sharper edges. Just change angle as you need to to make sure you're comfortable to be able to access those parts. Although when you can't quite get there with the side of the brush, just go for the tip of the brush instead and just make sure you're angling so that you're painting that downward towards yourself motion and just very carefully follow along those edges, such as along here on the helmet. 
Now on the top of the helmet for that sort of soft heart that we were building up there earlier on, we can take that a little bit further. And if you want to do this, what you then need to do is just glaze on a small amount of this color. So to get this ready, it's a matter of just thinning it down even more on the palette. So adding quite a bit more water into it to make it really thin and really quite runny. So kind of like that. And you can always test on the palette to see just how thin it is. And there we go, that's looking pretty good there. Now the trick to doing this kind of thing is just to make sure you don't put on loads at once because, because it's so watery, what can happen is it can build up quite a bit and get a sort of um, kind of like a pooling effect. So it's the surface tension, the water sort of pulling all the paint together and becoming a bit of an unnatural finish to it. So to avoid that happening, just remove the excess off on some tissue and just load up a very small amount onto your brush. And with this, all we're looking to do is to thinly apply it towards this top part of the dome of the helmet here. So just very thinly on this area. So it just fades into the color beneath it. And there we go. Once that's done, then if you want to, you can add a second finer highlight using Pallid Witch Flesh. And this is like that Administratum Grey earlier on, where really we're just looking for the parts that stand out the most. So it's always going to be small areas, such as this little part of the vent just here. It's a little bit on the corner of this part of the armour of the helmet going around the faceplate. Same on this little point here and the brow as well. And also on the pistol, we're looking again for sharper points, such as the corner back here and also the iron sight just along here. And with that, those bone color details are highlighted. And so now we can move on to highlighting the other colors on the miniature. I'm gonna start out with that bronze for which we're gonna use some Liberate Gold to highlight it. And then we'll move on to the red and here we're gonna use some Evils and Scarlet. Finally, we need to highlight the silver, such as on the sword. And for this, what we're gonna use is some Stormhost Silver. But first we need that Liberator Gold and to apply it again, I'm going for the small layer brush because the application is gonna be pretty much the same as what we've just been doing. We're looking for the edges of these details and we just need to follow along and pick them out as neatly as possible throughout. So remember, just to make sure your paint's prepared for that purpose. Thinning it down as you need to until you have that control and then just making sure that you don't have loads on your brush so it doesn't run out of control. And then what we're looking for are the edges of these parts, such as on the sword, for example, and just looking for those corners and just gently working our way around each one to give it a nice highlight. Once you finish highlighting that bronze, you're then ready to move on to highlighting the red using some Evilson Scarlet. And for the plume, we once again just need to approach using the side of the brush and just very lightly skim across at this time, slowly building up those highlights just so they catch the raised strands of that hair. In addition, we've got the little ribbon on his arm to highlight here. And once again here, we want to do some edge highlighting. So very carefully move in, just using the tip of the brush to pick out those edges and be as neat as you can to highlight this area. And with that, the red is now highlighted. And so now we can move on to the blade of the sword. And here we're gonna use some Stormhost Silver. There's actually two phases to this. First of all, I've got it very thinly on my brush, just like we did when we were glazing on the front of the helmet earlier on just there. Because what I'm gonna do with this is just glaze it towards the tip of the blade to make it just brighter in this area. So we're looking at very thinly applied that area there and then on the underside as well. So just turning it so we can access that part and applying it just along here. Now, ideally with this, what we want to do is two or three coats of it, just gradually getting a little bit closer towards that curvature towards the tip of the blade. So for the next one, I'm going to be around about there. And the same again on this side, just along there. And what this is doing with each successive layer is the silver is going to get brighter. So this way we can control it to get brighter and brighter right down to the tip. So now ready for that third coat, which I'm just going to place in this area just there. So there we go, there's one. And then on the other side. And then with that done, all we need to do is to edge highlight the remaining detail of the silver blade here. So it's just going to be along the actual sharp cutting edge using the side of the brush all the way along here. Then the reverse of it, so it's gonna be on either side of the reverse here. So again, using the side of the brush just to skim all the way along. And then for the trickiest part, which is the part down the middle of the blade. And for this, what I like to do is just turn the model so we're painting downwards again towards ourselves and sort of stay on this kind of brighter side and just start there and just gradually work your way down using the tip of the brush. And with that, the blade of the sword is now complete, as is most of the miniature. There's just a few details left to do, which are the gems and also the eye lenses. And these can be painted at the same time using the same colors, so that's what we're gonna do. And to do this, we need to start out with a dark red, so I'm gonna use some corn red for this, and then we need to wash it down even darker with a black wash. Here, I'm gonna use some Nuln Oil. 
But first of all, we need that corn red, and to apply this, definitely go for a small brush now. I'm using my small air for this because these details are all quite small in this miniature. And the first thing we need to do is look for where the actual gems are in the model, because Eldari miniatures have lots of kind of bumps and things on them. The ones that are actually the gems, though, remember, are the ones that are set into a little sort of housing around them. So in the case of our Guardian, what we've got is a gem on the chest, and they'll usually have one around here somewhere. So we're looking at this one just here, and what we need to do is just block in the stone of it, leaving that gold around the outside. So we're looking at that sort of area there. But in addition, this has got some on the sword hilt. So we're looking at just here. Again, you can see the gems set in a little sort of housing, so we want to block that in too. Now we also have the eye lenses to do, and when doing this, it can be a little bit tricky and even a little bit intimidating doing this kind of thing, but actually it's a lot easier than it looks. All you've got to do is approach it from the right direction, which is usually coming in from the side like this, just very gently moving in and just putting some of this colour in the middle of the eye. So just really brace your hands against each other, steadily move in, we're looking for that sort of area just there. Once you've applied that base coat to each of the gems and both eye lenses, the next thing to do is to wash each one with a little bit of Norn Oil. Carefully applied using that small brush once again, just over the top of each one. Once that wash is completely dry, we're then ready to move on to finishing off these details. And to do this, what we need is four colours. First of all, we're going to return to Evelson Scarlet, but then we're going to go quite bright quite quickly. So here what we need is some Fire Dragon Bright, followed by some Uriel Yellow, then a very small amount of Matte White, so a pure white here just to finish it off. But first of all, what I'm going to be using is that Evelson Scarlet, and to apply it now, go for the smallest brush you have. I'm going for a detail brush from the Army Painter for this, because here we're just going to be applying a small amount of this colour to these features. So you just need to make sure you thin that paint down so it's under control, so you have that accuracy with it. And then what we're going to do is start out with the gems. Now, for each of these gems, what we need to do is apply this colour in a sort of L shape in the lower left-hand corner, and that's an orientation to how the model's standing. So in the case of this one on the chest, that's going to be this sort of area just down here, just kind of building it up in that corner there like that. So it's like a sort of C shape really. But then when it comes to elsewhere in the miniature, we want to kind of replicate that. So in the case of the one on the sword, that's going to be on this side now. So we want to go just there because you see in relation as the model's standing there, it's still that sort of lower left side. Now when it comes to the eye lenses, we want to go towards the middle of each one. So we're just looking at a little line towards the front of the helmet. So in this case, we're looking at just a little bit of this colour applied in there. So there we go. And the same on the other lens. Once that's done, we can then move on to Fire Dragon Bright. And with this, we want to kind of repeat this pattern, only focusing on the colour a little bit more. And in the case of the gems, that's going to be a little bit more towards the lower left. So we're looking at that sort of area just there. And then when it comes to the eye lenses, it's going to be a little bit closer towards the front of the helmet. So we're looking at just in there. Next up we need some Uriel Yellow, and with this we're just looking to apply an even smaller amount in that same area on each of the gems, so just a very small amount just down here. And then when it comes to the eye lenses, now it's pretty much just a little dot just at the very front of each one. And then finally, to complete the effect, what we need is some matte white. And this is just for a little reflection in the opposite corner. All we're looking to do is just a little dot. So we're looking at just there to get that little bit of light. And for the eye lenses, it's a matter of just putting a little dot at the very back of each one. So we're looking at very carefully just in there. Now, once you've done this, you're then ready to base your miniature. And as ever, it's entirely up to you how you base it. But in this case, I'm going to go for a desert base. And here we have the completed Ulthway Guardian ready to defend his home. So as you've seen, painting these miniatures is very straightforward, but as is the case often with Eldari, these models really benefit from a neat paint job because it really benefits their aesthetic to be as clean as possible as you're applying the paints onto it. This means just really taking your time, especially in those edge highlights, so just really take your time as you're going through that phase to get it as sharp as possible. But otherwise, have fun painting your Guardians, and we'll see you again very soon.